I've lived in Los Angeles my entire life, and I've always had this idea that London is a place that I could move to. So part of my objective here is to figure out if that's accurate. <laughs> and so to be in London, even just looking out a window at a different view has been really, really stimulating for every single type of writing that I am embarking on. Whenever I get anxious, my mom told me that I should go to my happy place. In my mind, bookstores are my happy place. Over the course of repeated visits to London, Daunt was one of the first ones that I ever found. On this particular trip, I went with a couple of friends, but oftentimes I go by myself. There's just this massive section in the back with all the travel books in what is a very international city and almost feels like a stopping point for a lot of different people on different points in their journey and to have this extremely deep well of knowledge about travel and about the world. And I picture specifically the day where I went by myself and was sitting and journaling like in that big back section just for hours. So I went to Angel in the Fields with a friend of mine from my undergrad who was a study abroad student. And the pub was kind of an arbitrary choice, I think, but it ended up being very nearby where I was staying. And while we were in there, I was asked by one of the friends what my deal is with London. And so I started to list the architecture. I talk about the great coffee. I talk about the great books, all of the rich history. And ultimately I just say, I don't really know why I have a thing with London. I guess I'm just irrationally attached to it. And then like shotgun to beer or whatever it went back to. In visiting the Wallace Collection uh, at the end of 2019, I knew that it was a place that I wanted to go. Exploring it, like I always find very, very evocative images with uh, light and shadow. There's something about chiaroscuro that makes me really, really emotional. It always feels like something's being revealed, like I'm being let in on a secret that I'm not supposed to know about. The Young Archer is a painting of a young black boy and he has this very complicated expression on his face where you can't really read it and his features are very specifically outlined and it to me just has so much dignity. Being a person of color and exploring art museums, it's really rare that you see that from that particular period in that particular region when you're looking at European art from, you know, four or five hundred years ago. In general, any images of people of color are pretty reductive or shunted to the side. And so to see this portrait that was really dignified and really attentive was really moving to me. And I sat in front of it for a really long time. And I realized immediately upon seeing it that I needed to get a print of it for my father. And it's still hanging in his office. One of my favorite gifts I've ever gotten for anybody. The first time that I went to Denmark Street was on this trip. I was there with my friend Katie and her friend Marcus. And we went into multiple stores on the street. And I needed to get a cable, but <laughs> I also, we were just looking at the guitars. And we were just having these conversations about the history of the street and the history of the London music scene. Again, similarly to bookstores, there's something about music slash guitar stores that's very comforting to me. There's like so much potential energy. And so to be in London, even just looking out a window at a different view has been really, really stimulating. I don't really know why I have a thing with London. I guess I'm just irrationally attached to it. 